Greetings, everyone. On today's episode of Facts Friday, we're welcoming Dr. Lori Tucker. Dr. Tucker is clinical professor in pediatrics, director of pediatric resident research program, division of rheumatology at BC Children's Hospital and Department of Pediatrics at the University of British Columbia. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Tucker. How are you? I'm terrific. It's a real pleasure to be here today. To get us started, a lot of people don't realize that arthritis affects children, particularly some of the more serious autoimmune forms of the disease. How common is it? it you know, it's interesting. The figures uh, vary a bit, but about one out of a thousand children have arthritis, a chronic form of arthritis. Um, and additionally, there are kids that suffer with uh, more rare autoimmune conditions such as lupus or vasculitis, blood vessel inflammation or dermatomyositis, inflammation of the muscles. Um, so, uh, you know, it said about uh, probably about 20,000 kids across the country um, have arthritis. Another misconception uh, when the coronavirus first emerged months ago is we didn't think children were at risk. This week, the journal American Medical Association published a study that finds COVID-19 can actually be very serious in children. Are patients living with juvenile arthritis at an increased risk of contracting COVID-19? So I'll answer that specific question first. Um, and uh, Actually, there is no evidence to suggest that children with juvenile arthritis are at an increased risk of getting COVID-19 compared to other children. Uh, even those that are taking uh, disease-modifying drugs or biologic medications. Now, how do we know that information? Actually, pediatric rheumatologists are pretty connected around the world. And even in places like Italy, um, where it was quite a hot spot for COVID-19, uh, our colleagues there were not seeing increased numbers of COVID cases among their patients with juvenile arthritis who were on biologic medications. Um, now, I wanna get back to what you said about people thought kids didn't get COVID-19. Um, there's some interesting things actually um, and, and more because, you know, not everybody's being tested for this. It really seemed like, in fact, some kids were getting COVID-19, but they were having very mild cases. Um, and there was some question about whether kids were able to um, transmit this to other, to adults, more susceptible adults, um, because their symptoms were so mild. You mentioned uh, medications, DMARDs, biologics. These are powerful drugs that uh, some of these children patients are taking. Is there a concern that they should stop taking their current medications? And how do these medications affect COVID infections? Um, so the message that uh, we really want um, families to understand is that um, please do not stop your child's medications. So it is not recommended to stop your child's medications um, because we don't want your child to have their disease flare. Um, and, you know, there are children who have different, uh, uh, different levels of immune suppression based on what medications they're taking for their arthritis. And it is true that children who have arthritis and are taking biologic medications uh, are likely, they are definitely more susceptible to getting a variety of infections. And our recommendations for those children and their families around uh, staying away from public places and, uh, and, and hygiene might be a little different than children who are on methotrexate only. Um, but the really important message is don't stop your medications. And if you are concerned about what to do about your child who's on a biologic, contact your pediatric rheumatology team and they'll give you um, some really practical advice about your child's specific um, situation. What do you recommend pa um, patients do or parents 
um, if they suspect their child or if they have uh, their suspicions themselves, if they have COVID-19? So what you should do is, um, depending on where you live in the country, follow the specific advice that your public health officials have provided for getting tested for COVID-19. Um, in most provinces, in many provinces, they are doing more widespread testing of individuals who have symptoms. Um, so generally what you should do is go to your children's hospital website or the public health um, website for your province and there will be very clear instructions about what to do. Um, in many places, people can contact their family physician's office and they can get instructed about how to get tested. The thing to be a little bit cautious about is if you think your child has COVID-19 or you yourself have COVID-19, um, it's best not to just show up in a hospital emergency room unless you're really quite sick or just show up in your family doctor's office. It would be ideal if you are able to call ahead particularly to the family doctor's office, just so that they are aware that they need to be um, cautious about when you come in, putting you in a separate room and, and, and using appropriate protection. Um, we, there's um, another thing yep. I wanted to mention, uh, Kelly, um, and that is that uh, families are really anxious about coming to the children's hospital, no matter where they are. And, we're starting to be concerned that um, families are not bringing their children in for care um, when they're sick <laughs> from a variety of reasons. Um, and some of our families have been reluctant to come in and see us in person when we know we need to see their child. Um, so I'd like to assure families who are listening that in fact, um, children's hospitals and, and doctor's offices are quite safe to come to when you need to bring your child there. Um, there's a lot of cleanliness measures. Um, we're using uh, appropriate distancing um, protocols. Uh, we're wearing protective equipment when we need to. Um, but what we don't want to see is we don't want people to keep their children away from medical care until they're really quite sick from other problems. We, we prefer to see them in person. Mm. We have uh, ACE members who are asking us questions every week and some of these are from parents of children who are living with arthritis and we have a number of practical questions that we'd like to quickly cover off with you sure. in our remaining time um, the first one we seem to get quite often is um, should my child avoid public places such as shopping malls public transit uh, playgrounds what's your recommendation on that um I would say based on the current situation, um, for a child with arthritis who is on a disease modifying medication or a biologic medication, uh, trying to maintain some social distancing procedures is optimal. So I would, I would recommend trying not to take your child to the grocery store uh, or on public transit if possible. In many places, playgrounds are closed. Um, uh, most uh, parents are being suggested not to set up play dates uh, with uh, groups of children, um, just for the time being. This is gonna change over the next two to four to six weeks as provinces open up. But probably your child with arthritis on a disease modifying drug or biologic should be on the later phase of uh, opening up. And you should be a bit more cautious till we see what's happening. We certainly over the past few months have seen a disruption in routine healthcare. And some of our members are asking us about um, why was their child's appointment canceled? And how does a virtual visit work for a child with arthritis or rheumatic disease? So for um, most uh, of the pediatric rheumatology groups across the country uh, have been asked to bring fewer kids to the hospital to allow parents and families to be uh, isolated uh, in place. So what that has meant is that your team, the pediatric rheumatology team, the nurses and the physicians have uh, looked at people's uh, charts 
and uh, we've set up what we call virtual visits. So for example, for our families, we have some families that we're just speaking to on the phone um, and really just reviewing what medications your child is on, how you think they're doing, do they need to get blood tests, what questions the family has about COVID or their own, uh, their own uh, situation, and making a plan to maintain that child's health uh, during this time. Uh, for some families, we're talking like I'm talking to you now, we're having Zoom visits. And in fact, um, for uh, some families, a Zoom visit means that you're in your home on a device, iPad, could be your phone, could be your computer, and we would invite you, uh, might be both parents uh, and your child, to um, come at a specific time together where we get to talk to you and find out how you're doing. We might ask your child to do some moving around so we can actually look at their joints and how their joints are moving. Mm -hmm. um, and we often will have our nurse or our physiotherapist come in on the Zoom call as well. Um, so you're able to get quite a lot done during those uh, what we call virtual visits. Um, but I think your family should be assured that uh, we don't plan on doing this forever. Uh, we hope this is just a stopgap. We prefer to see your child in person. And if we have concerns uh, that require us to see you in person, we're going to recommend that. You mentioned uh, over the next few weeks, um, the reopening of economies uh, across Canada, um, different provinces, different levels of readiness to begin to do that. As part of that equation, uh, the provinces are considering opening up uh, elementary schools and asking uh, kids to be able to go back to school, either elementary school or to daycare. What sort of guidance can you provide families about returning to school at this time? Um, well, I think, Kelly, this is a uh, currently somewhat difficult question to answer because there is no specific uh, information to really guide us in this situation. And also, children with arthritis um, span kind of a spectrum. So for children that have arthritis that's well controlled, who are on minimal medication, uh, they are likely not at much more risk than any other child uh, in going back to the school setting. The children for whom parents may have more concerns are primarily children who are on more intensive treatment, particularly those children who are on biologic treatment. Um, and what I would say is that for the time being, I think we would recommend that you follow the advice that your pediatric rheumatology team is going to provide you about going back to school. Um, and this may require a staged approach. We may say, well, some children, you know, it's okay to go back to school now. For some children, let's hold off for a little while and see how, how things go over the next weeks as schools open up. Um, and this is, in the end, also a family decision because there may be some families who feel strongly that they either do or do not want their child to go back to school or families who financially really need to have their child go to daycare or school. Um, so this is really quite a complicated, uh, complicated uh, situation at the time being, and there's no single uh, you know, advice being given right now. Well, we want to thank you for all the work that you're doing on behalf of the families um, here in British Columbia and your colleagues across the country. It's been a, obviously a, an incredibly challenging time for these families and for these patients. So thanks again for your time today, Dr. Tucker. Oh, you're welcome. And we welcome all of our viewers to join us next week for new episodes of Arthritis at Home. Thanks for watching.